<laughs> the word of God. Now, there is no way I will be accepted in the nation of Philippines to become a national of Philippines and nationalize when I'm not going to keep the constitution of the nation of Philippines. Why do you think you will be welcome into the kingdom if you're not going to keep his constitution? All right. I want to bring in one more thing before I flow. Let us go to Numbers. Let, probably let's go to, 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 okay, Numbers 32, verse 12. Numbers 32. Principles of the kingdom. Remember, this is what we are discussing. We are discussing the principles of the kingdom because we are now coming into the kingdom era. We are now in the kingdom era. Beloved, all those kind of, you know, uh, over bloated grace thing that you've been hearing is gone, is over. We are now in the era of the kingdom. You must live by his kingdom principles for you to enjoy the benefits of his kingdom. Amen. Deuteronomy 32, I read verse 12. And they brought, ah, sorry, Numbers, Numbers 32, forgive me. Is that where I am? All right, yeah. Let, let's go to Deuteronomy 1 first. Let's go to Deuteronomy 1. Let me, let me use Deuteronomy 1 instead of Deuteronomy chapter 1. Let's go for verse 36. Let me just use that and, 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 and move on fast instead of. Okay, save Caleb, the son of Jephne. He shall see it, and to him will I give the land that he had trodden upon, and to his children, because he has holy followed the law. Alright? When you read it in Numbers, it added Caleb and Joshua. Now, the word important here is only Caleb and the land that he had trodden. Remember, there was a promise that was given in Abraham. And the promise is all this land that you have walked upon, I shall give it to you. And every place the sole of your feet shall tread upon, have I given to you. This is a promise and also a rule. We use it as a rule. That's why today you can go into a certain city and say, Father, your word says, every place that my feet shall tread upon, you will give to me. And you claim it and you stay there and you find out that the anointing of the Holy Spirit works for you and the Most High will bless you in that land and give you the place. Mm -hmm. It is both a promise to Abraham and also a rule in the scripture. Sometimes we use rule, but it's also a commandment, a law. It is a law established that whosoever treads upon a certain place and by the Spirit of the Most High claims the place shall have it. It's a law. So you can apply it and make it work for you. Now, this same thing is what the scripture is referencing. At this point, the children of Israel are being refused from possessing the land that was already promised. And among the 12 spies that Moses sent, 10 are being rejected, even though they had trodden on the land. But they did not accept the word of the Most High. The Most High said, even though they trod on that land, I shall not give it to them. There was about 2.5 million people that left Egypt. Among them, 600,000 men. Men here means above 20 years old. Because the fighting age, according to the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, is from 20 years. So for you to be counted as a man in the age of fighting, you must be 20 years and above. So all these 600,000 men were from 20 years and above. Can you imagine? Men, 20 years and above. 600,000. God killed all of them. Only two. Mm. I, I want to show you something. Mm. 
the principle of guidance is very important. So when you are listening to overblown grace, oh, God is not going to kill anybody. Oh, we have grace. That is nonsense. God killed 600,000 men. Those that he manifested his mighty power to save from Egypt. He killed them in Egypt, in, in the wilderness. 600,000. Only two were left to enter the land. Why? They did not walk by the principle of guidance and obedience to the laws and the commandments of the Most High. So do not say that you have grace. Israel had grace in the wilderness. They ate manna from heaven. You have never eaten manna. They, ate, they drank water from the rock. You have never drank such water. They ate quail that flew from nowhere. They can't tell where it came from. Beloved, they saw the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. They saw the mighty hand of God manifested in Egypt like never before. They saw the Red Sea divide into two and they walked on dry ground. They saw all kinds of miracles. But the Most High killed them. Only two. Principle of guidance to walk in the world of the Most High is very, very important. All right? I move on. Now, in the most recited psalm of David, in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. He does what? Leads me. He leads me to steal waters. In this book of Psalm, David was depicting the principle of guidance and followership. No sheep lead itself. Every sheep is led by a shepherd. I have never seen sheep telling the shepherd the way they must go. <laughs> if you find any sheep telling the shepherd the way they must go, run from that sheep. Something is wrong. A wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> that sheep may be a wolf in sheep clothing. It must be the shepherd telling the sheep where to go. The whole book of Psalm started with a depiction of leadership by the Most High. Guidance by the Most High. Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Counsel means leadership, guidance. Another word for counsel is guidance. Guidance. So that's why we are discussing the principle of guidance. Beloved, it is an amazing lifestyle when the Most High begins to guide you. You are not going to be beaten about the bush. You are not going to be beaten the air. The Most High will show you the target. When you hit, boom, Mani Pakia, he will hit the target. You will hit the target. Because you're not going to be beaten about the bush. There will be a guidance. When you step your feet, you are not going to step on a sinking sand. You are going to step on the rock. He will lead you in the way that you must go. Moses said, show me the way. You see, this is why when Jesus came, Jesus says, I am the way. The way. Not a way. The way. No other way. And that's why in that same statement, he says, no other way can lead to the Father except by Him. Mm. Mm. The way. Mm. One way. This is why Jesus also gave us the teaching of building on a rock and on a sinking sand. And in that teaching you realize that the commandments, the word of the Father, the commandments, the laws of the Father, the principles of the kingdom is the rock. That is the rock. Don't say, I have faith, I have... If you have faith and your faith is not on the word of the Most High, mm. you don't have faith. Mm. Let me tell you, prostitutes have faith. Yes, because they go out on the street, they don't know who will come to patronize them. Mm. There was no appointment with Mr. 
Zacchaeus. There was no appointment with them. They just go and stand on the street and have faith that one man must surely come and say, What's up, babe? Yeah. Yeah. And surely a man is going to come around and say, Baby, you're looking good. Yeah. And a deal will start. Yeah. She has faith. What am I trying to say? Once your faith is not on the word of God, your faith is in the act of Satan. Because anything that is not of faith is of sin. Once it is out of the word, out of the commands of the Most High, out of the guidance of the Most High, it's no more of him. Beloved, David says, he leads me. He leads me. So this brings me to a statement it must be God's way or it is no, no way. way. If you are not in God's way, you are in the bush. Mm. 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 If you are not in his way, you are in the bush. Mm. Mm. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible says, No man has gone to heaven to mm. see the Father, mm. to come and tell us how to go. Mm. But the Son, mm. who has always been with the Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only him. Only him. So the way of the Most High can only be guided by two means. Number one, the Spirit and the Word. Today, there is so much, so much, so much emphasis on the Spirit. But the Word, we have left it behind. That is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. We lead people to receive Jesus. We lead them to receive Holy Spirit. We make sure they speak in tongues. But we forget to teach them the commandments of the Father. Mm. 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 That is no establishment. Mm. Without the commandments of the Father, there is no establishment. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. In fact, you have put that person in trouble. Do you realize it was the same season that the Holy Spirit came. We call this season Pentecost. By the way, I told you before, Pentecost is taken from Greek word pent, 50. And they just added cost. So <laughs> it's not about the cost of pent. It's not about how much you buy pent. The right name is Feast of Weeks. Mm. Feast of Weeks. Yeah. 49 plus 1. Mm. Seven weeks celebration mm. for the receiving mm. of the word. Mm. Mm. After the Most High gave the word, he says to Israel, celebrate the receiving of the word seven weeks. Mm. Perfection. Mm. Mm. It breaks my heart whenever... I begin to talk about this command that we are now throwing away and, and following the philosophies of men. Mm. After the Most High gave Israel the commandments and the laws written down perfectly, he said, celebrate it seven weeks. Mm. Remember, seven is the perfection of the days of creation because he created in the six days and rested on the seven. So seven is the perfection of the numbering of days. And for the Most High to say celebrate the word for seven by seven, mm. it's telling you it is the perfection of all things. Mm. The word of the Most High. Mm. These same commandments, we've thrown them away mm. and we are taking mm. the philosophies of men. Mm. Why? Convenience. Mm. Convenience. The preaching of the word has become just tell the people what is convenient for them. Mm. Tell the people what is convenient in their generation. Mm. And so with each generation, we keep chopping off the word of God. We keep cutting it off. We keep cutting it off. We keep cutting it off. Because with each generation, what is convenient mm. is being reduced in their tolerance because every generation reduces its tolerance from a generation before them mm. a generation before tolerated two three four five hours of fellowship this generation only tolerate 45 minutes, mm. 30 minutes. Yeah. can you imagine that can you imagine what will happen in the next generation 
Fellowship may be cut down to 10 minutes. What is going on, beloved? It may be cut down to 10 minutes. Why? Tolerance is being chopped off. Chopped off. And so, when we preachers of the word, teachers of the word, apostles of the Most High, when we begin to teach on tolerance basis, we lose the direction of the Holy Spirit of Most High. The principle of guidance is very important. Very important. You must have the tolerance to keep the word. On that same season of Feast of Weeks, that the word, the perfect direction for mankind was given, that was the same week that the Holy Spirit came. The same time Moses received the word, the same time the Holy Spirit came. He's telling you that the word and the spirit are one. Hallelujah. You cannot separate the word from the spirit. They are one. That's why we say walking in the spirit does not mean closing your eyes and walking on the road. <laughs> no, it means walking in his command. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. The principle of guidance is very important. And, and, and I want to read a place for us. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. You will love this place. 